going to ask Gary and Gretchen. And we welcome back Jerry Mathers, the beaver, with us here this morning on our show. And uh, Jerry, we, we kind of want to just go back and do a little reminiscing about uh, the Leave it to Beaver show. I can do that. Well, I'm sure you can. <laughs> even before the show started, you were an actor like a two, weren't you? Yeah, you know what? I just happened to be walking through, uh, well, actually probably being carried at two years old through a shopping mall. And a lady came up to my mom and said, the little boy that's wearing the uh, two-year-old clothes has outgrown him, and could your son, you know, model for us? And my mom um, was basically, my dad was a coach. In fact, he graduated from a Morningside College in Sioux City. No kidding. Out in California. He was a valedictorian. I think they won the state championship in basketball that year, and he was the, uh, or 46, and he was the captain of the team. But anyway, so they, he had come out to USC under the GI Bill um, to, get a, to do his, some of his final graduate work. And she just happened to be walking through a store, and the lady said, you know, could your son be a model? So they had no idea of anything about Hollywood or how it worked or anything. They had, you know, my, my grandfather was a post, was one of the postal carriers, a letter carrier in City, Iowa. Oh, funny. That's so, fate. <laughs> yep. That, and then, you know, what that weather is like, it usually isn't like it is now. He went through a lot of those hard winters carrying that mail. Yeah. But anyway, so I started doing that. And what people don't realize is this was really when television was starting. This mm -hmm. was 1951 and 52. Right. And there were no child actors because the people that worked in Hollywood were all film actors. And the people that they needed for television were live because they had no videotape. So if they needed a two-year-old and they needed him to go out on stage and do whatever, they basically picked someone that had done it before because if you went out and the audience scared you or you forgot your lines you know they were in a lot of trouble so the very first thing i did was a commercial for pet milk and i'd walk into like a bar room scene ed Wynn was the bartender and he had his own show and i would walk in in diapers and a 10 gallon hat and, six <laughs> and all the cowboys they had stuntmen fighting all around me and one of them would lift me onto the bar and i would pound on the bar and say i'm the toughest sombre in these parts and you better have my brand and then they would do a commercial for pet milk which at the time was like a baby supplement for like a formula would be now yeah and so i worked all the time uh, before i did leave it to beaver i worked with alfred hitchcock i did the trouble with harry which was shirley mclean's first movie i did two movies with bob hope the seven little foys and that certain feeling i worked with alan ladd um walter pigeon james cagney frank sinatra so I did all sorts what of... What a resume, my goodness. a whole bunch of movies before I even started Leave it to Beaver. How old were you when uh, Leave it to Beaver began? Yeah, that's a hard question because what I... I mean, it's not hard, but there's many different answers. I did the original pilot, which was called A Small World, when I was about um, six and a half or seven. Mm -hmm. But by the time they sold it and we actually went into production, I was almost eight. Oh, wow. So when the show was... was was done, finished up, how old were you then? I was uh, 12, but that's another hard question because we used to do 39 a year. So when okay. we finished production, it, you know, the show went on for quite a while, then it was on prime time, and we did it for six years, and we did 39 a year. So as I say, it went on for quite a while, so I was probably almost 13 by the time it actually went off prime time and went into reruns. But that's where I got very lucky because my dad, um, when he came out to California, became a coach right away, and then he went on to become a vice principal and principal. And when I was doing Leave it to Beaver, he was the principal of the largest high school, or vice principal actually, and then principal of the largest high school in the L.A. Unified School District. Uh, yeah. So he was dealing with the very best of kids and the very worst of kids. Yeah. And the other part about it was he was fully employed. So it wasn't like my family was living off of what I was making from Leave it mm -hmm. to Beaver, which was the case with a lot of them. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, indeed. That's very true. What was it like being a child star for you? I mean, did, did you handle the pressure or the attention pretty well? Or? Well, yeah, because, you know, I come from a large family. I'm the oldest, but I have a sister and three brothers. And uh, as I say, my dad was used to working with the very best of kids and the very worst of kids. And when the show ended, you know, the studio came to my parents and said, you know, we'd like to put Jerry under another long-term contract and do a lot more movies and probably do another series. And my parents came to me and said, do you want to do this? And the one thing I really missed was I had a private tutor, which is just about the best education you can have. In fact, yeah. it's the education of the kings and queens of Europe, but it's something most people in the United States couldn't afford. I mean, you're one-on-one -on -one with a teacher. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I told my parents, no, um, you know, I want to go to regular school because the one thing I couldn't do was play sports. So it was my 
freshman year in high school, and my parents said, that's absolutely fine. Nope, he doesn't want to do it. And I spent the next four years in, you know, regular high school. I was on the football team, the track team, the swimming team. And, you know, basically, actually, I was called the Beaver in high school, but it wasn't because of Leave it to Beaver, because I started a band called Beaver and the Trapper. Oh, okay. And we were like a garage band, but we played all the local proms and sock ops. There were about four or five bands that played all the local high schools. And so people knew me as the Beaver, but it was from the band Beaver and the Trapper. <laughs> Well, now, everyone remembers when your voice started to change. Yes. Now, honestly, Actually, it's even worse for Tony because he came in the first year. Really? Oh, really yeah. Changed. Mine changed just a little bit. I'll tell you, Leave it to Beaver plays in 180 countries and 160 languages. And when it's in Japanese, <laughs> it's a little girl dub my voice. So it never changes. Not only am I speaking Japanese, but I'm about 12 or 13 years old, and I'm still speaking with a little girl's voice. Oh, funny. <laughs> wow. What are some of the other cast members doing nowadays? What, 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 Barbara Billingsley, she's still around, right? Oh, yeah, I see her. She's just as beautiful as ever. I see her, you know, pretty much um, at uh, charity events. She goes to an awful lot of charity balls, and I do too. And so I always know I can get a dance with her, and she's a very, very beautiful woman. Mm. Uh, Tony Dow is one of the directors on Star Trek, and he's up in Canada right now. An interesting one is Ken Osmond. He was um, played Eddie Haskell, and people always think, oh, he must be just like that, you know, yeah. real, a real rascal. Well, the truth of the matter is, when he finished Leave it to Beaver, he went on to become a Los Angeles police officer <laughs> perfect oh he spent God. 18 years on the Funny. force and i you know he was working in the part of la that i wouldn't walk around in during the daytime wow. he was there at night on motorcycles so he was the first one to everything and i kept saying ken you've been on the force five years you've been on the force 10 years why don't you transfer out of there and you know get off of motorcycles for sure and he kept saying, no, this is my city, and someone's got to be there. It might as well be me. Mm. Well, after 18 years, he got shot in the line of duty, Ooh. and he's now on disability retirement. In fact, oh. it's one of the episodes of, you'd have to see it in a rerun now, but of that show Top Cops. Yeah. Uh -huh. but he is basically a police hero, which is nothing like, uh, nothing Eddie Haskell would ever yeah. You never would have guessed that, for uh -huh. sure. We want to talk uh, one more time with Jerry Mathers coming up in just a few minutes here.